what I want to do today, I was prompted to ask a question actually, was anyone here for the uh, presentation that, that just happened before I've taken the stage? For those of you that weren't, there was a question that it prompted me to ask, and that's to ask yourself, why, why are we here? Like, why are we here at BET? Why are we here at BET today? And I hope that all of the responses come back to the same place, and that we just want to be able to support our children better to learn. I hope that that's where all of us come back to, because we can see some flash stuff, and we can see some really good things that are innovative and new and wonderful, but the core question that must be answered in amongst all of this is, is it going to support our children? Right? That's our job. That's what we need to do. So I want to talk a little bit about insights and online assessment tool and something that I believe has the power to really, really uh, help our children and not just support our children directly, but support the adults that are working with our children. In the first instance, I just want to give you an idea about what Insights is about. It analyzes the feedback from children's assessment and presents it in a way that's really easily digestible. So we can look at some of these headline uh, figures and, and headline data at a glance. That's pretty simple. And I think that that's something that we can expect from all assessment systems. We can start to go through and we can look at groups. So we're able to isolate groups and see how they're doing, see how their progress is going, see how their attainment's working. Again, all of this is available to us at our fingertips. A little bit of background, this, this works with an assessment paper. So children sit with their assessment papers and they complete them on paper as they would a lot of assessments, including statutory assessments. The key to a good assessment tool is the assessment questions themselves. That is such a crucial skill. We would all like to think that we can write the most wonderful questions for our children across all subjects, but to get it right so we can get really good data is an incredible skill. So we were fortunate enough to work with Louise Hoskin Staples, who was on the test development team for the Department for Education to develop the SATs. The skill set that she brought to the questions that were being written allows a level of analysis to come out of it that I hadn't seen before in schools. And like I said, I've probably been in the game, ah, oh, about 20 years. You all look very young, right? So probably a wee bit longer than most of you, okay? But I've not seen something like this. Just to take you a little bit like through the process of what actually happens. Children sit down with a paper, a paper test as they would, or a paper assessment. They complete that paper assessment. Then me as a classroom teacher, I take that in and I start to mark. But this is where it may be slightly different to a system you're using. We start to mark online, okay? So we feed it in online. And what we see is, is that when, we, when we're marking it and we're, we're putting in the data online and we're marking online, it means that it's instantly accessible to analyze and to get feedback, which I'll, I'll go on to in a second. What I would say is, is that embedded inside of the marking tool is the marking guidance. So if we do have multi-mark questions, the guidance that we need in order to allocate the right marks is available to us. It's always there. So if it might not be me who's marking or someone else, the guidance is always accessible to that person. The other thing that happens is that we can step away from our marking. So I don't know if anyone, and just give me a, a nod if this has happened to you ever, where you've sat down to mark an entire set of papers or, or mark full stop, and you've never been interrupted. Has that ever happened to any of us? Because if it's happened to you, I'm jealous, because it always happened to me. This just, we can mark and we can stop and start as we choose. We can save our progress. But it's what it does afterwards that separates out insights from, I think, other programs. So what I'm going to go to is I'm going to show you this. Because the questions have been written in such a way that we can take out different types of questions, we can start to break it into cognitive domains. So we can talk about questions that are in a knowing strand, or an applying strand, or a reasoning strand. And I'll give you an example of what these mean. Okay? So take 1 plus 1 equals 2. We can just know that 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's the knowing. We just know it. Can I just ask you a name for a second? Maggie, do you mind, Maggie, if, if, we, if I use you for a minute, is that okay? Is that a, awesome? So Maggie's going to help me out with this one. She's going to help me explain the applying strand. And what I mean by that is the question that I might ask is Maggie has a name badge, Adam has a name badge, how many name badges do Maggie and I have all together? 
we're taking that basic fact of one plus one, but we're applying it in a situation that's familiar to us. Now we're going to go to the reasoning strand. There is one child sitting in a classroom. Another child comes in. How many children are in that classroom now? They're different tiered questions. The question I would have to ask myself and ask of the staff that I'm working with is if I was to give you another equation, say two times three equals six, is that right? I hope it's right. Are you able to write a question that would fall into the knowing strand? Most of us would probably be okay with that. Are you able to write a question with applying and are you able to write a question with reasoning? What we will find is that it's actually an incredibly difficult skill. Not only is it a difficult skill to write it, but it's a really difficult skill to identify them in amongst the questions we're asking. So insights can give us examples of the types of questions that these represent. Not only that, we can start to dig into what this data is telling us. So if I'm working in a, a two-form entry school, I might be working next door to a colleague, similar types of cohorts, but say the reasoning strand is not as strong in that class. I can then allocate time to work with colleagues. So in terms of analyzing support that's needed for colleagues, we can use this tool as well. So it's not just about the feedback that we're getting, a binary feedback of right or wrong, it's about being able to use the data strategically and analytically to make decisions in our school that ultimately will help our children. We also have the subject strands or the content domains. So you'll see again that in something like this, it tells us the makeup of an assessment. And again, we can break it down. So if I click on any of these, it can take me to how each individual child has done. So I can look at it at a class level or an individual level, but I can go down to analyze at a question level. Now again, I already said to you, you look younger, all of you, than I do. So you might have never experienced this, right? Have you ever done question level analysis or gap level analysis with bits of sellotape and huge great bits of paper with highlighters? Has anyone done that? Just nod if you've ever done that. Has anyone done that? So a couple of you have done that, right? It takes a long time to analyze that data and to get that feedback. What you'll find is that this is done. Keep in mind that all the teacher has had to do is mark the papers. That's it, and then we're getting this level of data and analysis. So if we keep going through here, this is the type of data that we can start to look at. So we can see that in a strand, a particular number strand, addition and subtraction, we can see that, that how many questions were right, how many questions were wrong. But within that, we're also able to see the types of questions that are being answered within that strand correctly or not. This immediately gives us an opportunity to respond to that and support children accurately. So it's not just a case of, oh, they need some more support or assistance in this particular strand of mathematics. It's actually, we can be far more sophisticated than that. And we can allocate time to say it is this type of question. Not only that, we start to get told the content domain. So if I was a newly qualified teacher or someone that perhaps needed more support and understanding what this meant, that level of support is there. So it's alongside everything that we do. We can also see here that the questions themselves we can go back to. So if we're not sure about a question that's not done as well as others, we can start to see the examples that have been used and respond to it. It also gives us links to the curriculum. It tells us about which cognitive domain it falls into. And it also, if you are using the Math No Problem program, allows you to make references to the books which is fantastic if you want to have examples of how this concept's developed, how it's shown, demonstrated, and how we learn. As I've said previously, seeing the types of questions is really important. So we've talked about it at a classroom level. So as a class teacher, I can respond to that. I can see where some children may need further support. Now I'm gonna put like my, my leadership hat on, no matter where we sit in the leadership structure within your school. One of the things that I think comes up is how do we support our colleagues best? Assessment for children or us as adults, the finer the assessment, the better we can respond to where we need to support and where we, where we can help. So knowing this allows me, if I'm gonna put a head teacher's hat on, to maybe allocate more funding for CPD. It may allocate uh, collegiate support, areas of that support, 
and I can justify it. So if I had to go to my governing body to sign off on a budget, for example, and say, we need X amount for this, I've got something that's granular that I can speak to. I've got something that I can say with absolute certainty, this is the area that we may need more support in or that we can develop. It gives us an opportunity to see school-wide trends. It also gives us an opportunity to see where we have those strengths in our school and where we can support people to move through and to be able to become better experienced in these certain areas. I touched on it at the very beginning of the talk where I was saying I think it's really important that all of us are able to understand the types of questions. So when we look at this type of assessment and we can say, all right, this is a summative assessment. We might, we might use this assessment twice a year, but what about formative assessment? And I think that there has been a massive disconnect between summative assessment and formative assessment. Summative assessment is something that we should look at and it should inform us on how we run our classes on a daily basis. And what I mean by that is, is that if I know what these type of questions look like, I'm able to ask those questions in my class every day. It gives me a question bank that I can use so I can respond directly to my children when they might be either, well, let's just put it this way. Children stop learning usually for two, two reasons. They can do it or they can't do it. I need a bank of questions in order to find out whether or not this child needs support or whether they need challenge. Being able to structure our questions and having these examples given to us and we can see what, where they fit in the grand scheme of things is so essential for us as teachers to be able to ask the right questions at the right time. And this is something that Insights does. I suppose the question that we can keep coming back to time and time again is what's the point of assessment? And I think that sometimes assessment is frowned upon, is seen as something negative. But without good assessment and accurate assessment, how on earth can we support our children? If we go to the doctor and he simply pokes us and says, does it hurt when I poke you there? And that's it. Then the doctor's not gonna be able to do too much to help further than that. We need to be as sophisticated that with our summative assessment. And I think that all we have to ask ourselves is what does our summative assessment look like now? How does it contribute to a strategic view in our school? How does it contribute to a daily program of support for our children and for our teachers. Are you all confident that the colleagues that we work with in our schools would be able to differentiate between the, the question types? Would they be able to give examples and support within a particular cognitive domain? Because if we can't answer those questions, I'm not convinced that we'll be able to support our children as well as we could. So I think that when we're looking at insights as a program, it's more than just the binary, how many percent of my class is at that level. Assessment shouldn't just be there, okay? It's far too important, our kids, our children in our school are far too important to leave it to chance, right? I also think that one of the other things that we can do with the Insights program is we can support colleagues who are perhaps not teachers and perhaps only work with children either remotely or they may not spend the same amount of time with them so the formative assessment is not done in the same way. By using the Insights tool and understanding where we can pinpoint it, then we can intervene effectively and quickly, get children back in the classroom. I remember being in a school once and it was one of the most depressing things that I heard out of a child's mouth. There was a wee intervention group outside, it was year six. And I said to the children there, I said, oh, what are you working on? They said, oh, we struggle with maths a wee bit, so we come out here and we get help with our maths. And I said, well, how long have you been doing this for in your intervention group? And they said, oh, since year one. And I thought, wow, that intervention group's not working and it shouldn't take five years to realize that. We've got the tools to be more sophisticated, right? And when we ask ourselves the question, if we know it's important that assessment is done well, 
that it's done at a level that allows us to make the best decisions for our children. The only other question that follows it up with is, well, when should we do it? Like, when should we, when should we assess like that? When should we find out about our children? And I think that there's probably never been a time where assessing our children and knowing where they're at with the disruptions that we've had so often that accurate assessment is done well than now. And we know that from the children in our schools. So I think that what we've got here is a program that can help you do that and it can help your colleagues do it and it can help your staff do it. And if you want to discuss further, I know, I know I have to wrap it up. There's just a sign above your head saying, that's it, that's time, come on, let's wrap it up. But if you want to talk about it any further, we're here, we've got a booth here at Maths No Problem, and there's some of us that will be here at the end. And just thank you for giving up your time. And also, thanks for coming to this for your kids. Like genuinely, I say that as a teacher and a dad, I just think it's pretty magic that you guys come looking for things that can help your children. And I think if we can play a part in that as well, then brilliant. But um, yeah, thank you for your time today. Must have been nice to have a sit down and enjoy the rest of your time at BET. If you enjoyed the video, then why not hit the like button? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you want to check out more videos, then click on the right to dive into another topic. Thanks for watching!